The Batman from director Matt Reeves is DC's next big comic book movie that is scheduled to release in March of 2022. Ever since the announcement of Reeves as director and Robert Pattinson as Batman, I've been waiting to see more and more from the project, wondering whether this could be a comic book film that turns out to be a genre defining one. But it wasn't until the first trailer and the addition of other cast members and production workers that I really raised my expectations and right now, putting the comic book genre aside, this might be my most anticipated film of next year. Of course, we have to put our expectations at the door when we finally get to watch the film, and for all we know it may disappoint come March next year, but so far we have only seen and heard positive things from the filmmaker, the cast and the studio surrounding the newest adaptation of the Caped Crusader. In this video, I'm going to be discussing why I believe The Batman has the potential to be one of the best comic book movies from the last few years, and why I am particularly excited about the new film. Before I get into it though, if you want to see much more videos on The Batman leading up to its release date, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's discuss why The Batman is so anticipated. When analysing comic book movies and box office numbers, Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe has increasingly released more films since it started in 2008. Not all of them, but most of them are fixated on big CGI spectacle, bright colours, and characters who appeal to an all-ages market. There have been a few different films though, mainly situated outside of the MCU, such as the Dark Knight trilogy, Logan and Joker, that can ground their stories and characters in a real and desperate world. Even in the new DCEU, Man of Steel, a film that I think is incredibly underrated and ahead of its time, started out with a Superman who kills, but one who is forced to make that decision in a situation he couldn't avoid. Both of these types of movies can be linked by a range of viewers, but there's no denying that we haven't had as many grounded takes on them as we used to. And whether we do get them, most of these films tend to be in conversation a lot longer than your average MCU movie, that is, product simply filling the void until the next three films come out and take that place during the same year. And that's coming from someone who loves The Winter Soldier and the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, two of my favourites from the last decade. But enter The Batman, DC's latest effort to bring The Dark Knight to the big screen. Could the Matt Reeves directed picture strike a new balance and craft an alternate bridge forward for comic book movies? Jeffrey Wright, the actor of Commissioner Gordon, said some things about the film that I completely agree with. He said, comic book films have sucked a lot of energy from the cinematic room. But with The Batman, there's an opportunity to use all of the trappings of that genre to explore some things in an American city through a lens of crime and corruption that are really grounded and relevant. So the detective work there is an exploration of Gotham, but it also becomes an exploration of a city very much like New York. Wright is of course likely alluding to the cultural conversation Martin Scorsese unintentionally brought up back in October 2019 when he said that Marvel movies weren't cinema, but rather more akin to theme parks. The debate over the validity of Scorsese's statements and over the impact of superhero movies on cinema in general was a pretty big conversation back when we all still went to the movies regularly. One pandemic later, and the simple reality is that the cinematic landscape has, if not been wiped clean, then at least opened up, meaning that there's a potential opportunity for a shift in these types of films. And more recently, you've seen a sense of mixed reactions towards the conventional MCU movies that dominated and pleased people for so long. 
I personally hope both types of movies will thrive within the marketplace, but I do think we definitely need more of the other type of comic book film to really freshen up the approaches and genres that blend in with comic book films themselves. And this is where things get interesting with the Batman. In particular, Jeffrey Wright spoke about the detective noir approach that the Batman seems to be aiming at. He said, you go back to the original, it's DC, it's Detective Comics, and the script is really beholden to that, beholden to the idea that Batman is the world's greatest detective. The script honours that and it also set a tone that was very clear and a tone that has been captured in that trailer. I think one of the aspects of the script that I was really stoked about was the Batmobile. The way it was described, it was described as this kind of retro hyper Hemi 5 muscle car that was just the craziest coolest thing you'd ever seen. This take on Batman's car and all the other elements is about hyper realism. To create an accessibility for our Gotham, a world that is tangible and grounded in reality but at the same time it's still fantastical. It's still tweaked, it's still arched but it's accessible, Wright explained. So perhaps Wright's biggest statement regarding the trailer was about special effects or the lack thereof in this new adaptation. He said that there is not one CGI image in the entire thing, it had all been photographed and in a comic book landscape built around a digital one, the Batman's focus on the practical might make the difference. Like Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, you can see shots from the trailer of stunt performers gliding off of buildings, rooftops and action scenes with Pattinson that were all filmed by him. There's a tangible reality and visceral nature to shooting stuff like this and it will only give more weight to the detective themed story and not lose that through unpolished digital imagery. Don't get me wrong, films like Avengers Infinity War and a few others can do a good job of implementing digital effects for the most part, but there's nothing like capturing the real thing. It makes it more enjoyable for the actors and crew and it also makes it more epic and polished for the audience who watches the film. It's more of an art to shoot things this way and the image holds up longer over time. But this is just one of the reasons that makes this approach one to be excited about. Adding up all of the points, what we get is a unique take on Batman through the detective noir approach. The film will presumably focus on a younger Batman, one that is likely still trying to find his footing in the world of vigilante crime fighting. It's supposed to be dark, resembling a gritty and violent tale that resembles the violence within Batman comics. These factors, combined with the unique villains being pitted against Pattinson's Batman, distinguish the upcoming interpretation as a refreshing take on Gotham's caped crusader. While many entries in the Batman franchise have flirted with darkness, few have really delved into the trauma that haunts Bruce Wayne below the cow. And while some of my favourite films of all time, like in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, captured a realistic Batman, with Christian Bale's performance delivering an honest portrayal of Bruce Wayne that tapped into his backstory, for a character whose entire existence is forged on revenge, Bale's Bruce Wayne doesn't focus as much on the same brutality that the comic books reflect. This was the right approach for Nolan's trilogy and it worked wonders, but for this new one, Reeves seems to be going for the more brutal take that Affleck's Batman kind of touched upon in Batman v Superman. Robert Pattinson has said that Reeves drew inspiration from classic comic book story arcs for the film, specifically the comic series The Long Halloween, a murder mystery in Batman's early days as a crime fighter that highlights his dark origins. The trailers for the Batman certainly alludes to a brutal one, featuring a full-on criminal beatdown with a worried reaction from Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman that instantly connects me to the true trauma and brutality of the character. Highly successful productions like Joker and The Boys have shown that dark superhero stories can still become huge successes and applying that principle to the most popular hero will surely take in massive numbers at the box office. More importantly, it sets the stage for a film that isn't afraid to make the audience question the character they watch on screen, making you think about his inner problems and mental state. 
If the trailers and early footage is anything to go off, then this Batman adaptation will certainly make that a present and strong point. The inspiration from The Long Halloween correlates with the potential for a diverse set of characters, something that was confirmed in the Batman's viral trailer. The footage indicates that the Riddler will serve as the main antagonist, but the trailer also teased appearances from other iconic villains, such as Catwoman and the Penguin, with more rumoured to appear, all of whom are supposed to be early into their criminal careers in Gotham City. This will be a fresh storyline for Batman, where most films see the caped crusader taking on one primary villain. The Riddler is depicted as an intelligent and calculated villain that contests Batman's intelligence, and the trailer even indicates that the Riddler knows secrets about Batman that are beyond the scope of his own. This seems to be elevated through a nuanced performance by Paul Dano, who's an actor that has proven how strong he is in these types of quieter roles, like Prisoners for instance. And what has probably drawn the most scepticism for this upcoming film is the casting of Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne. Many have argued that the actor doesn't have enough experience to fulfil such a popular role. The sceptics who question Pattinson's acting ability have probably not seen any Pattinson films beyond the Twilight franchise, as the actor has demonstrated excellent performances in films like The Lighthouse, Good Time, and most recently in Christopher Nolan's new feature film, Tenet. There will be heavy pressure on Pattinson to fill the shoes of such an iconic character within pop culture, but his recent indie and big budget performances have proven that he's ready to take a chance at being the Dark Knight. But alongside what looks to be a packed cast of great performances across the board, with Colin Farrell's Penguin, Andy Serkis's Alfred, and Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman, what really excites me is Matt Reeves helming this version after his consistency as a director with films like Cloverfield and the Planet of the Apes films. He has shown that he is a great director when it comes to reinventing franchises and assembling talent, and the Batman definitely displays a production crew who is at the top of their games. Whether it's Dune and Rogue One cinematographer Greg Fraser, who can capture the grandeur yet intimacy in a frame, or composer Michael Giacchino, who has already released snippets of the score from his new Batman theme, and it seems very fitting for the tone and approach that the director is taking. All of these elements and people working on the film signal to me that this is a Batman film which is going to stand on its own, and that's nothing but good news in a genre which is mainly focused on crafting cinematic universes. Again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it is fresh to see a return to this kind of format every now and again. And while this is going to form the base of a new trilogy, I think Reeves will focus on making this the best possible film on its own, similar to how Nolan crafted three unique stories in his trilogy. But as we were touching on slightly before, what excites me the most about the filmmaking is how it will all hopefully work to bring a film that at its baseline is a true exploration of Bruce Wayne. Comics like Batman Arkham Asylum explore the madness at the heart of Bruce Wayne better than any other comic, movie, or TV show ever has. Batman can't be beaten, and if he is, then he's never down for too long. Sure, years of training around the globe and learning every skill set known to man helps, as does his unshakable survival instinct, but it's madness that allows Batman to keep fighting against impossible odds. The Batman 2022 is poised to bring that madness to the big screen in a way we haven't seen before. There is an innate truth to the character that sometimes gets overshadowed by the fact that he is the world's most popular superhero. And this is that Bruce Wayne is not a well man. Filmmakers have only just begun to explore the serious psychological issues that drive Bruce Wayne, and with audiences increasingly expecting darker Batman films, I I wonder if we've reached a point where we can all accept that being Batman isn't the healthiest option for Bruce. Bruce Wayne's journey began when his parents were gunned down in the street by a mugger, and we accept this tragedy as the driving force behind the character. But it's not just the fact that Bruce's parents died that makes him Batman. 
The origin story isn't what makes the character unique, but rather the fact that, in most cases, he never dealt with it. Each time we see it from a different filmmaker's perspective, getting a glimpse into Bruce Wayne's psychology and what makes him Batman. In Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins, Thomas Wayne's last words also shape Bruce's transformation into the Caped Crusader. His final words are, don't be afraid. As a result, overcoming fear becomes the driving force of Batman's arc in the entire trilogy. Bruce is driven to confront a fear of chaos, a fear escalation, and a fear of not being able to leave behind his own legacy. Bale's portrayal is actually one of the more stable depictions in live action movies, and the most important thing that his father left him wasn't money but coping skills, a way out, and a means to get better. In fact, Nolan's Wayne is so successful at letting go of his fear that he's able to abandon the role at the end of The Dark Knight Rises. This turn towards positive mental health was actually decried by some fans as a misunderstanding of the character. But I'd argue that Nolan simply had the luxury of giving Batman an ending, whereas the comics rely on Batman being Batman forever. And as such, the Batman in the comics will likely never truly heal. Plenty of Batman movies have explored aspects of Bruce's sanity, but Matt Reeves has a chance to go all the way in. It's clear there's something off about Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne. There's no clean-cut public-facing persona, but rather a disheveled man with a seeming history of mental instability and a penchant for violence. The use of Nirvana's Something in the Way in both trailers feels like a significant choice and it's more than just a grunge aesthetic here. It's a true commentary on Batman. In the same way Todd Phillips' Joker made the clown prince of crime more than a comic book villain, Reeves and Pattinson have the opportunity to give us a Batman that fully commits to depicting him as mentally unwell. He is painfully human, and all of us who struggle in our way to deal with the issues in our minds can relate to a character struggling to do the same, even if he usually fails. Despite the fact that the Batman will follow a younger, less world-weary Bruce Wayne, don't expect Robert Pattinson's first foray into the world of Gotham to be an origin story. Although rumours had been circulating that Reeves' script would be an adaptation of Frank Miller's Batman Year One, Reeves brought this up saying, obviously we're not doing any origin tales or anything like that. While Reeves says that Miller's Year One is among his favourite Batman comics, and may have been included among the journey into the source material that he did in order to prepare for the new film, all we know is that Reeves' script will lean into Batman's skills as the world's greatest detective, which could speak to a number of the different Batman storylines, or to something entirely original. I think we are about to see a quintessential Batman story play out, one that stays apart from many of the other comic book films, being a detective approach infused with a sense of David Fincher's Seven. One that questions the mental sanity of the man behind the cow. We'll have to see, but regardless, I am incredibly excited for it. But they were the reasons why I think The Batman could be the best comic book film from the last few years. Like I said before, when I go into this film or anyone, I tend to leave my expectations at the door and could end up either really liking it or being extremely disappointed. But the points I have raised in this video are purely from a before seeing the film perspective and listing the reasons why it is so anticipated. I honestly haven't been this hyped for a comic book movie in a while, and hopefully it lives up to those expectations. But we'll soon find out this March if The Batman is another great film from Matt Reeves, and whether it stands on its own as a fantastic comic book film. But I'm intrigued to hear what you guys think towards the potential for The Batman being a pinnacle comic book film, alongside whether you think it is capable of being a genre-defining one that stands alongside films like The Dark Knight, Logan, Joker, and many more. So let me know down below in the comment section. For more videos surrounding the Batman leading up to its release next year, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. 
Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex and as always, make some noise.